Haiti's president denies corruption allegations. And in sport, TNT football execs upset about being left in the dark. I'm Ricardo Robertson. This is Caribbean in 10 for Thursday, June 13th, 2019. I'll be back with the details after the break. Haiti's President Jovenel Moïse has categorically denied being involved in corruption and as he faces mounting pressure to resign. Addressing the 24th anniversary of the founding of the Haiti National Police yesterday, the embattled head of state said he was not guilty of any corrupt deeds as alleged by opposition forces who have announced plans for more street protests to pressure him to step down. Moïse said, quote, I am going to look you right in the eyes to tell you today, your president, the one you voted, is not involved in any corruption. Your president was never in corruption. The justice system needs to do its job and carry out an investigation, end quote. Thousands of protesters have taken to the streets since Sunday, demanding his resignation. And earlier this week, 21 lawmakers wrote to president, of the Chamber of Deputies, Gary Boudou, urging him to indict Moses on charges of corruption, funds misappropriation, and repeated violations of the Constitution. That all followed a report by the Superior Court of Auditors that accused the government of illicitly spending more than two billion U.S. dollars of Petro-Carib funds that meant for social and development projects in Haiti. But Moïse says, he is not the one to blame. He said yesterday that those who wrongly uh, managed or used the government's money would have to answer for their wrongdoings in a process that is just balanced and without political prosecution or bias. Over in Guyana now, the probe into allegations of possible bribery and movement of gold by former member of parliament, Chandra Spassad, has hit a stumbling block as investigators say they cannot get him to submit a statement. Now, according to Guyana's Public Security Minister, Kemraj Ramjatan, police in the uh, progress in the matter has stalled. Now, Passad left Guyana for Canada the morning after he joined the opposition in the National Assembly in voting against the government in a no-confidence motion which was passed. He is a Canadian citizen and his vote is being challenged in the courts on the grounds of his dual citizenship. But police had also launched an investigation into whether he was paid to cast his vote. Ramjatan said the investigation still holds a position of national importance, but admits that sometimes investigations are on pause for years pending new evidence. Charandas is left and the investigators were supposed to, I think, ask him some questions. They're not getting him. And that is as far, whatever was the status, for the past couple of months, it has just stuck there. For Canada, you have to have evidence of a crime being committed before you can bring back somebody. Evidence, solid evidence of a crime, especially against a citizen of Canada. I don't know if we have managed to accumulate that. It was acting on information and suspicions, um, whether someone else paid him to do what he did. Um, all of that will be some very technical legal issues. 
In other news now, the Italian media is reporting that a top seize on the bodies of the two Bahamians pulled from a river in the city of Turin determined that the men drowned. Wounds were also found on one of the bodies, but the report said they were not fatal and could have been the result of the body being dragged. And preliminary re reports uh, from toxicology tests have reportedly shown traces of alcohol in the blood of both Bahamas Foreign Service Officer Alare Ramsey, who was on uh, study leave in Vienna, Austria, and psychology PhD student Blair Rashad Randy John. Their bodies were pulled from the Po River within a day of each other last week. The two who were colleague, uh, college friends had met up in a Turin where John, a student of St. Mary's University in Canada, was to present a paper at a psychology conference. Their families have questioned what led to their demise. And John's mother, Kathleen Ramin, told the uh, media in the Bahamas that her son was a strong swimmer and she did not believe his death was an accident. Stay with us, your Midday Sport is next. Welcome back. It's now time for sport. Several members of the Trinidad and Tobago Football Association are up in arms about their boss, David John Williams, excluding them on a number of matters surrounding the game. TV6's Sergio Dufour tells us more. The rift in the Trinidad and the Tobago Football Association continues to show its face. This time, three members of the board have declared that they have been what Super League President Keith Lucloy termed constitutionally sidelined. They claim that they are being left in the dark with regards to issues pertaining to the selection of a coach for the women's football team, the non-participation of the Olympic team in the Olympic qualifiers, as well as the current state of the senior football team, which has not won a game in their last five matches. Since uh, May, the board of the TTFA effectively has been, as I would like to term it, constructively dismissed in favor of the so-called emergency committee that has been appointed by the board itself, by seven members of the board. They appointed themselves. They have the votes. So they appointed themselves and they're now running the association under the umbrella or the constitutional cover of the emergency committee and the board has been sidelined, the five of us. TTFA board member Sharon Joseph Warwick, who represents the Women's Football League, spoke out with regards to confusion surrounding the selection of a coach for the women's team. The TTFA stated in a release that no coach was selected, but Warwick felt all parties should be part of the decision making. It is our opinion that right and right that any decision regarding the appointment of the staff to the women's team should be discussed with us, TT Wolf. We acknowledge that in the past, T.T. Wolf was largely only concerned with the running of the local football league. We wish to point out, however, that T.T. Wolf is responsible for women's football in TNT in general. And that's Caribbean in 10. Join us again at 6.30 for Caribbean Newsline. Until then, good afternoon. <laughs>